is Miles Weiss. I was born in the old country, New York City. My name is Catherine Weiss, and I'd love to tell you a little bit about my journey of faith. Hello, my name is Kalida Wokowitz, and I'd like to share my story with you. there to a Jewish conservative family. We kept a kosher home. I went to Hebrew school three days a week and was bar mitzvah at age 13, like most of my peers. And like many of my peers, I took a hard left after my bar mitzvah and wandered through the New Age philosophies for 20 years. At age 33, I met the most beautiful woman in the world who told me that Jesus was the Messiah of the Jews. Well, I thought this was the most absurd thing I ever heard because everyone knows that Jesus is for them and God is for us. Well, to my surprise, a wrestling match began. I looked into my own Bible, the Hebrew Scriptures, and saw the prophecies of Messiah and how they were, in fact, fulfilled by Jesus. I gave my life to him. I went immediately to Bible college because I wanted to know what was in the scriptures and followed that with a degree in marriage and family therapy and a license as a psychotherapist. And I've been doing that for many years. That work of reconciliation between family members, one to another, led my wife and I, because I did marry her, into reconciling the nations. We went to India, to Africa, to Russia. And it was when we were on our way home from doing marriage seminars in Siberia that a young man challenged us and he said we were cheating our children out of their Jewish heritage. This was a surprise. But we started to keep Shabbat in our home, Sabbath, on Friday evening. And Jews and Gentiles came from all over in order to look into the Hebrew roots of the Christian faith and to discover the unity and the shared destiny that God has for Jews and Christians. That continued. We went on to build a congregation from that group. We built another congregation called Beit Abba, the Father's House. We've been on television for several years, taking tours to Israel, taking leaders to Israel, and especially those who want to know where Christianity comes from, what is the relationship between the modern faith and historical Judaism, and especially what is the relationship that God intends between the sons of Ishmael, the Arabic people, and the sons of Isaac, the Jewish people. Is there any hope for reconciliation between those two groups? I believe there is, and I think you will too after you see this story. I was raised Catholic, and in my college years, I realized that I was away from God. That upbringing gave me an awareness of God, but it also gave me awareness that I couldn't really get to Him on my own merit. It was one day that a girlfriend told me a simple gospel story of that you're here, and God's here, and Jesus is the bridge to have eternal life. And she said, do you want that? And I said, absolutely. Who wouldn't want that? It seemed so easy, and it was. All I did was call upon the name of the Lord, and he became really alive to me. Shortly after that, I met Miles, a Jewish man, and I was very attracted to him, but I could tell that we were coming from two different worldviews. So on our first date, I shared with him about my faith, and uh, he didn't take it as easy as I thought he would. You know, he was a little taken back. I went home that night, 
And I said, God, can you save a Jewish person in my simple childlike faith? He said, not only can I save a Jewish person, but I am a Jewish man. I came and I walked as a man from a Jewish town. So God gave me faith to go back to Miles and encourage him to pray and to ask God to reveal himself and to look into the Bible, into his book. God opened his eyes and he saw the whole book was a Jewish book and that God is a God of love and mercy and grafted us Gentiles in. So we began a journey of courtship and after two years we were married and then we went to Bible college. You know, the parents weren't as excited about our newfound faith as we were, but God is a God of restoration and he even worked it out with Miles's family. I was born in 1967 in Bethlehem to a Muslim Palestinian family during the Six Days War. Because of the military conflict that caused the death of my mother, I was placed in an orphanage for the first eight years of my life. When I was nine years old, the orphanage was destroyed in a bombing and I was sold into slavery to a Jordanian Bedouin tribe. When I was 13 years old, my father was found and I was placed in his care. When I was 15 years old, my father decided the best for me is to get married. So he arranged my first marriage to my first husband who moved me to the United States of America. After enduring five years of abusive marriage with my first husband, my husband decided to divorce me for the simple fact that my first child was a daughter and not a son. My husband took my child away from me and I wasn't able to see her for many, many years. After six months of my divorce, my father decided the best thing for me is to get married again. So my marriage was arranged to a second imam. My second husband moved me from the New York area to California. After being with him for nine years, my husband threatened my life and he was going to kill me. To really understand what's going on in the world today, especially Israel and the Middle East, we have to understand the beginning of the story. And it goes back to a man named Avram, Abram, who was called out by God from the surrounding nations and sent on a trail to the, what is now Israel. And in doing that, God promised that through the descendants of Abraham, all the peoples of the world will be blessed. Listen to this. Now the Lord said to Avram, get yourself out of your country, away from your kinsmen and away from your father's house, and go to the land I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, I will bless you, and I will make your name great. And you are to be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, but I will curse anyone who curses you. And through you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Now, there's a very interesting and important secret that's about to unfold through this story. Because Abraham had two significant sons in the midst of his family, one of whom would become the father of the Arabic people and the other the father of the Jewish people. And so we're going to continue this to know that there is something that God intended for both of those people groups and never intended for there to be a permanent family feud. It can be healed. To really understand the healing of the family feud, it's important to remember that Abraham loved both his sons. He loved Ishmael and he loved Isaac. Ishmael, the natural son of Sarah's handmaiden, Hagar, and Isaac, the supernatural son of Abraham's wife, Sarah. Now listen to what God says about them. He says, For Ishmael, I have heard you. I have blessed him. I will make him fruitful and give him many descendants. He will father 12 princes, and I will make him a great nation. But I will establish my covenant with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you at this time next year. In other words, God promised to bless Ishmael, and he did it. The sons of Ishmael, the Arabic peoples, have tremendous land holdings on the east side of the Jordan River. They have all the oil wealth of the area. They have tremendous wealth. 
and they have been multiplied with many, many sons and daughters, so many that they populate the entire Middle East and are spread out throughout the world. A tremendous blessing from God through Abraham to Ishmael and their children. And Isaac, God says, my covenant I will establish with him. And so God gives the sons of Isaac the land of Israel. He brings through Isaac's line the patriarchs, the prophets, the entire scripture, the Bible, and most of all, the greater son of David, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, comes from the line of Isaac because the Messiah is a Jewish Messiah and savior of the world. The prophets foretold the time we're living in today when the nations will be pitted against Jerusalem. Listen to Zechariah. He said, when that day comes, I'll make Jerusalem a heavy stone for all the peoples, and everyone who tries to lift it will hurt themselves, and all the earth, earth's nations will be amassed against her. And we're really heading into that season, aren't we? There's been a concept within the Christian world called replacement theology, which says that once Jesus came, the Jews were done away with, and God has turned his attention from the Jewish people. And we see that in the works of the Inquisition, the Crusades, the pogroms of Europe, and sadly even in the Holocaust, which was not a Christian event, but Hitler claimed, claimed to being a Christian. Well, there's a new replacement theology arising, and it's a Palestinian replacement that says things like, since the time of the cross, the Jewish people are set aside, and in fact, Jesus was a Palestinian freedom fighter. But that's not the case. We know from history, from archaeology, from scripture, and from international law that Jesus was in fact born a Jew, died a Jew, and is returning as the lion of the tribe of Judah. People will say today, I'm not anti-Semitic, I'm just anti-Zionist. What that means is that I don't think there should be a place on this earth safe for the Jews to live in. That is anti-Semitism. But all are welcome to turn to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to turn in love and to come through faith in Messiah to learn how to love Israel, the Jewish people, and to dwell together in peace. Now more than ever, it's important for the sons of Ishmael to turn to the God of Abraham, the God of their fathers. Now more than ever, it's also important for the international church to turn her heart towards Israel and the Jewish people as God is preparing to come back to Israel. There's a beautiful destiny waiting for the Jews, the Gentiles, and the Arabs all together as we turn to the God of Abraham. The book of Ruth is a poetic picture of where we are in time right now. It's journey between Jews and Gentile into the harvest land. You know, the book of Ruth starts with a very sad story because there was a famine in the land of Bethlehem and Naomi, her husband and her two children journey out of the land of Bethlehem down to Moab outside of where they were supposed to be, but they were seeking a better life. When they got there, Naomi's husband died. Her two sons married two Moabite women, and shortly after that, they died also. What a bleak picture. Naomi was gripped with pain, and she even said, the hand of God is against me. You know, God was doing something in Ruth's heart at the same time that Naomi was coming to the end of herself. She said to her mother-in-law, I'm going to go back with you to the land of Bethlehem. She said to her in Ruth 1.16, your people are my people, your God, my God. Where you go, I will go. And this shows a covenant love that God birthed into Ruth that surpasses natural understanding. Ruth had no way of knowing that what one act of surrender, one act of love, would open the door to her legacy. As we continue in the story with Ruth and Naomi journeying back to Bethlehem, that Ruth went out to glean in the fields and she just happened to glean in the field of her 
kinsman redeemer. You see, God had built into the Jewish people that if somebody had died, that there would be a redeemer, a kinsman redeemer, that would redeem back their life and their fortune so that they would have a legacy. They met the field owner, Boaz. Ruth married Boaz and became the ancestor of David, which is in the lineage of Jesus. And we see so clearly again this poetic picture between these two, the Gentile bringing strength to her mother-in-law and the Jewish mom teaching Ruth how to go in and to possess her inheritance with Boaz. You know, I became convinced that I would be to Hannah, which is Miles' mom, like Ruth was to Naomi. I made a prayer in my heart, Lord, help me to love Hannah like Ruth loved Naomi. And it was, it was very challenging, I must say. When I first went to see the family after we had already been married, they threw us another beautiful party so all the relatives in New York could come. And I could feel the tension. And I knew that there was something that was hurting in her heart. When her and her husband had their first child, that she gave birth to a stillborn, a boy. And it was such a disappointment to her life that it really marked her as a painful place in her life. And I think she thought that she was losing her son maybe all over again to this Gentile woman. So I cried out to God, and He gave me a promise in His scripture. In Isaiah 58, it says that I will be the restorer of paths to dwell in, and I will give you a path that you can dwell in with her. And he gave me a promise that if I walked with him in this journey, that she would someday turn her heart to the Lord. And I can tell you that that is the story. You know, it was a long journey, just like Ruth's was a long journey, but God in these days is restoring the Jewish people in more number than ever before, back to their God, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of their Messiah. Just as God gave Ruth love for Naomi and God gave me love for Hannah, Miles' mom, God wants to give the church a love for Israel and the Jewish people. There's a covenant promise for you in Genesis 12 that if you bless the sons of Abraham that he will bless you. In 1996, I ran for my life. I found myself torn and broken and hurting with no one to help me. During the worst period of my life where I felt like I wanted to kill myself, the Lord appeared to me in such a radical way that it changed the course of my life forever. My world of view would change from seeing only death, evil, and destruction to have in a life worth living with the Lord of my life, Jesus Christ. I had been a Christian now for 10 years, but I was still struggling with my identity. I found myself so wounded and hurt, tore between love and hate. Mostly what got me is there is a tradition in the church which is tell, we tell each other that Ishmael is a mistake. That has been a very negative effect on me and my other Christian Arab friends. I was still struggling with my feeling between love and hate. I wanted to love, but so many times I felt hatred at the same time. My hatred mostly was aimed at the Jewish people, sometimes at the Arab people, and most of the time at the whole world. I knew that my behavior was wrong and I felt like a hypocrite just like when I was in Islam. When I prayed in Islam five times a day, I bowed to Allah and I was hoping that he will heal me and restore me. But every time I left my prayer time, I was still broken and hurt on the inside. When I worshiped the Christian God, I was told he would love me beyond my mistakes, but I wasn't feeling his love. 
I was in a place in my life where I really felt like I need to be restored and healed to the one through God. This journey started by really discovering who Jesus Christ is. I discovered he is the Hebrew God With that discovery, I discovered the story of Hagar, how God really loved Hagar and loved Ishmael. God loved Ishmael so much that he gave him his name. Ishmael's name means that God hears. That means that God already heard the cry of the Arab nation, the Palestinian nation, the Arab all over the world, and God wanted to answer their cry. And the most beautiful example was in the life of Hagar and Ishmael, that God came and provided for them and rescued them when they were in the desert and they were all alone without water. God came and spoke to Hagar and showed her his mercy, his love, and his grace for her and for her son. This biblical story really started to shape my life and change my life view about everything that was going around me. It caused me to truly fall in love with my Hebrew cousins and to come in peace and reconciliation in the spirit of the one in you man. I am an Arab by birth, which has connected me to Ishmael, the father of the Arab nation. God revealed himself to Hagar, Ishmael's mother, I relate to that because God revealed himself to me. This amazing, beautiful, wonderful God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, one after broken and hurting woman in the desert and provided for her and for her son, that spoke to my life that Jesus, the Messiah, the Holy One of Israel, want to restore the Arab nation to their roots, which is himself. I discover that this love is available to me that I could be in unity with my cousins. We are by birth the sons of Ishmael and the sons of Isaac, our cousin. We are a family and God has a plan of redemption a restoration for both nations, the Arabs and the Jewish nation. We see that this story has a past, a present, and a future. We recognize that it begins with Abraham and his calling, and it comes into the present to bless us as we know one another by the Spirit. And there's a future coming, an incredible future, an extravagant future. As Isaiah tells us in chapter 19, the day is coming when there's going to be a highway of holiness between Egypt Israel and Assyria. Can you imagine that part of the world living in peace and real harmony together? Only God can do that. Only God can do this. Only God can do that. But that's what he says. He says that he calls Egypt my people, Assyria the work of my hands, and Israel my inheritance. And that day is coming. There's going to be a day when peace will reign on the earth, when Yeshua Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace, comes to rule and to reign from Jerusalem. And we want to be part of that. We want to invite you to be part of that as well. If you say yes to Sar Shalom, to Yeshua, to Jesus, just as we did, you will experience that peace. You'll understand how to love one another and live in unity in a way that only God Himself can make it happen. <laughs> Hashem el Avraham Lech lecha Me Shema. <laughs>